Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math lesson today. Here's the problem we're going to be going over today. Um, we're going to just find the values of a and b that make the function differentiable everywhere. And this is the function that we're going to be making sure is differentiable everywhere. Uh, you know, it's this piecewise function here where you have uh, when x is less than or equal to negative 1. We're going to use b times x squared minus 3. And then when x is greater than negative 1, we're going to use ax plus b. So this is a pretty common type of problem. Um, really when you're trying to make a piecewise function like this continuous or sorry, I'm sorry differentiable everywhere There's two kind of conditions that you need to meet to make a function differentiable everywhere First of all, you need to make sure that your function is continuous everywhere And then once you make sure that the function is continuous you can make sure that it's differentiable everywhere So there's kind of those two different things we want to keep in mind as we go through this problem so the first of those making sure that our function is continuous everywhere um, and I do want to point out before we start this, I'm going to go over kind of a shortcut method for solving a problem like this. Uh, so I'm not going to get into the limit definition of continuous or differentiable uh, with this problem. I'm just going to show you the shortcut that makes it a lot easier. So to make sure that this function is continuous everywhere, since we have a piecewise function, we really want to kind of consider two different cases here. So first of all, we want to look at each of our pieces on their own and make sure that each of those pieces is continuous within their entire domain. And then once we figure that out, we can make sure that basically this piecewise function as a whole, when we jump from one piece of our function to the next, remains continuous at that point as well. So in this case, the pieces of our piecewise function is you know some constant times x squared minus three and some constant times x plus b. So these are both polynomials. This first one, this top one here is a quadratic, and then this second one is a linear function. So both of those are examples of polynomials. The interesting thing about polynomials is they are differentiable and continuous everywhere. So basically, the only possible place where this piecewise function could not be differentiable is at x equals negative 1 when we switch from one of these pieces to the next. So really all we need to do throughout this problem is make sure that this function is differentiable at x equals negative 1. And if it is, then we know that it's differentiable everywhere. So first of all, we need to make sure that this function is continuous uh, at x equals negative 1, which basically means, you know, if we kind of imagine this isn't necessarily what this function would look like, but if we have some function that comes up um, you know, let's just say like this, you know, coming from the left, our function basically needs to line up with where it comes from the right. So this example here um, w is what it would look like if it was not continuous. Basically, we need to pick our a and b so that these two pieces of our function actually do line up at x equals negative one and continuously flow between them. So in order to make sure that that happens, all we really need to do is plug in x equals negative 1 into both of these pieces and then make set them equal. Make sure that they have the same output at x equals negative 1. So if we do that, we're just going to take um, b times negative 1 squared minus 3. And then we need to make sure that equals a times negative 1 plus b. So basically all we did was just plug in x equals negative 1 and set these pieces of our piecewise function equal. So we know that this equation needs to hold true. Now we also need to make sure that the derivatives of each of these pieces are equal at x equals negative 1 because that's our other piece, right? This equation being true will guarantee that our function is continuous at x equals negative 1. But we also need to make sure that it's differentiable at x equals negative 1. So we actually need to take the derivatives of each of these pieces plug in x equals negative 1 and set those equal to make sure that they have the same slope at that point as well. So finding the derivative of bx squared minus 3, we're just going to be able to use the power rule. So we'll bring the 2 down in front and lower the power by 1. So that'll be 2b times x. And then we're going to plug in negative 1 for x. And then lower the power down to 1, which doesn't really uh, do anything, really. Um, and then the derivative of the negative 3 is just going to be 0, so that's going to disappear. And then the derivative of ax plus b, the derivative of ax is just going to be a. And then the derivative of b is 0. So there's actually no x's to plug negative 1 into on the right side of our equation. So this first power is not doing anything. I'll erase that. 
Um, so now we have basically these two equations with A and B, and we need both of them to be true in order for this, uh, this piecewise function to be differentiable at x equals negative one. So basically we have a system of two equations with two variables. So essentially at this point, it's just solving a system of equations. So uh, let's just go ahead and first simplify both of these equations, and then we will kind of figure out how to solve that system. So negative one squared is just gonna give us one times B is just gonna be B minus three equals A times negative one is negative A plus B. And then down in our second equation, we're gonna have negative one times two B is just negative two B equals A. So for solving the system of equations, notice in this second equation here, we already have our A solved for. We already know that A equals negative two B. So what we can do is take negative two B, which we know equals A, and plug that into A for our other equation, and then we would have one equation with only one variable that we could solve for. So doing that, if we take, you know, basically this equation and plug it into that first one, we're just gonna get b minus three equals negative negative two b because a is negative two b so we're still going to have a negative here and then we're going to get another negative there and then plus b so then we can just simplify this from here so we'll get b minus three equals positive two b plus b is going to be three b and then we can subtract our b over giving us you know, that'll cancel there. We'll have negative three equals two B. And then we can divide both sides by two and we'll get B equals negative three over two. So now we can take this, this number that we know B must be, which is negative three halves, and we can plug that into this other equation we have to figure out what A is. So if we do that, we're gonna get A equals negative two times b and b is negative three halves so we're just going to get negative two times negative three halves which is three so a equals three b equals negative three halves we'll make sure that you know basically each piece of this piecewise function are equal when x is negative one and not only that but it'll also make sure that they both have the same slope and we figured that out by setting those two equations equal so that they get the same output at that x value and setting their derivatives equal so that they have the same slope. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel. Those are great ways to help support the channel so I can keep making more videos like this. Thank you and see you next time.